Yes, this is Mr. Wanda on the All Good Show. You don't know, Flames Radio, we play the hottest tunes, we bring the most exclusive interviews. Right now, we're blessed with one of the most talented reggae dancehall artists on the road right about now, who is gathering international acclaim along the way. I'm talking about the lady who gave you hits like Wrong Address, Free, People Talk, Strongest, Queen, I Rise, Richest Girl, My Man, and the international runaway hit, I'm Not Afraid. Her international acclaim is evidenced by the fact that she hosted the International Reggae Awards and World Music Award in 2013, where she won the award for Best Female Vocalist. I'm talking about the lady who gave you albums like Strong One, Free Expression, Better Tomorrow, I Rise, Reggae Forever, and her talents have been recognized in the shape of nominations for a Grammy and a MOBO Award. She has toured the world exclusively, and she has worked with artists like Sanchez, Bugle, Kibaka Pyramid, Shaggy, Sean Paul, The Tamlins, Iwin, and the musical legend himself, Freddie McGregor. A message of empowerment is a staple feature throughout our work. I'm honored to welcome to the All Good Show and to Flames Radio, the strong one herself, the singer, songwriter, producer, performer, extraordinaire, known as Itana. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> wow, we have to add we have to add executive producer to that as well. <laughs> so, yeah, so, I so, agree. <laughs> but is there nothing that you cannot do? Because you've been present. I'm not watch out for my job as well. Because presenting is what I do. But oh, okay, and, and because you're presenting. I don't think I can do that one. Right, yeah, but you presented the award shows now, so like you. Want I to did, I did it one time, but yeah, it's not my thing, really. Not your thing. Okay, <laughs> well, thank you. At least maybe, maybe it was cool. thank you very much for leaving that one for me. Um, yeah. So new album, Gemini, out now. You understand? Brand yeah. Single as well. Um, Bubble, which is the um power play right here on Flames Radio this week. Power play tune. Thank you. Um, yeah, man, you have so it's exciting times. Oh, okay, challenging times because obviously it's not, it's very unusual regards to the whole COVID 19 lockdown thing. So I understand you didn't even have to cancel some tour dates as a result of that. Some? <laughs> I had to get to all. All? Jesus. <laughs> right. Okay. So how are you coping with the whole um, lockdown COVID? Is it pushing you to be more creative or, or what? Um, sometimes, I mean, I, I'm still recording, still writing, still, right. okay. um, producing, you know, as, as I go. And so I never really allowed, um, all the happenings now to change what I would do on a regular, you know, right. um, the only thing that has been severely, um, affected is, you know, of course, the ability to tour right. and to, perform and to meet with my fans and stuff like that you know um that has been a serious challenge um even to just deal with it mentally is hard sometimes but um besides that i'm like you know i'm teacher now i'm (laughs) i'm playmate i'm mommy i'm um i'm 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 still wife and all of that you Mm -hmm. know in all of it so I am enjoying a lot more time with my family than um, because, you know, if I were to uh, tour mm. um, or to be on the road, I wouldn't be able to be with them. So right. at least I'm grateful for that part of it. Absolutely. Pluses as minuses, but pluses as well, really. You understand? So right, right, right. Plus. You, can't, you, know, you can't put a price on time with your family, can you? So, so you're no, not, can't, definitely, definitely I'm not. I, would, not I am extremely grateful for that part. At least I don't have to feel bad about taking like a 12 hour flight mm. and you know stuff like that being right. a uh you know just wondering if, if i'm gonna land safe if i never everything i'll go cool at a hose and all these yeah, things yeah, that yeah, i think yeah. about <laughs> <laughs> yeah sound like a control freak to me but anyway let me leave <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh yeah <laughs> but we leave that for now um, <laughs> so obviously the single bubble i mean that's it's almost like a classic um echo chamber production upon that one there as well and you have um it's like you can envisage the whole cool and deadly yeah that's like you know say that yes, sir, man, sir. yeah that's that that is like say for anybody who doesn't know jamaican um patwa or lingo or we speak when we say bubble, we're not talking about blowing bubbles and we're not talking about bubbling a pot. <laughs> so we Straight whining. Right. <laughs> and the video leaves people in no uncertain terms as to what bubbling actually means. So thank you for clearing exactly. up any misunderstandings. <laughs> so now, well done. <laughs> um, but before we really get into the album, 
Um, I just want to talk a bit about your art. I mean, I do like the album. It feels like you've stamped an identity on each song. You understand? There's mm. different, feels like different genres have been drawn in as well. I mean, I feel like there's, there's obviously the dance hall, there's reggae. I feel like there's a little bit of R&B. I feel like I get a little vibe um, from R&B on there as well. I feel like even some Afrobeats kind of, ta- kind of um, style on there, a little jazz, you understand? Ballads on there. So you explored, you've explored various areas of your artistry on this album, and I can see. I sure did. I can see, you. and also I would say as well, a bit more of your personal, the, se- the sensual side of you has come out. Oh, true a that. Bit more on this album than the previous yeah. ones, which which is growth, and you're a very brave, I have to say, creatively brave to be doing that because you're giving more of yourself. You understand? I exactly. Right, but before we get into that, I want to talk about your artistry because I understand the song truly was written in about seven minutes. So, what yeah. is your, in terms of your songwriting, then what inspires you to write? Is it is it you have to hear the beat first, or you have to hear a production, or is an idea, or you have to experience something? What's your um, usual creative process to start writing? Sometimes it's um, in 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 the case of truly, like I heard the track first playing. Right, right. I walked in the studio and I saw. Uh, why are you playing the track? And I was like, yo, so what you got to do that track? And I said, well, um, may I revamp it? You know, may I rework it? And I said, no, you're going to leave it right where it is. <laughs> and I said, whose track is it? And he said, no, it's nobody's track. I just I work on it. I said, yeah. well, I'm taking it. And I said, so what do you mean by yeah, take it? Like, you already have the song for it? Like, I don't understand. I was like, yeah, the song named Truly. Right, right. And he looked at me all shocked. And I said, come on now. Mm. You know how you can hear things in your head, and I already heard the song, and I didn't know I was singing it. I was like, true. Um, oh, I love you truly, and we were meant to be together. Oh, truly. And he just laughed and just sent me the track. He was like, all right, finish the song. <laughs> <laughs> so that was obviously, so that, well, like I said, control freak. You told Wire exactly what was happening. <laughs> you, can, you, you can say what you want now, you know. You can say what you want. <laughs> uh, AKA, what's happening? Nah, you know what it is. I, I know what I want. Mm-hmm. And I know what I hear. Uh-huh. Um, and I know what I intend for the project. I yes. know what I intend for my fans to hear. Yes. And so whatever it takes to make that um, true, uh-huh. I'm going to do it. Absolutely. So, you, 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 if that means being a control freak, that I guess I am. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, for those who don't know, right here on the All Good Show on Flames Radio, the absolutely lovely and wonderfully talented Itan has joined us. Brand Spank new album, Gemini, is out now. Go and make that a big one, you understand? Do the iTunes thing, do the Amazon thing, do the Spotify thing, you understand? Support independent <laughs> music. Also, so you've executive produced this album, which I found yeah. really interesting. So... How have you found that managing? Because before, maybe if you're not executive producing, and it's on your own independent label as well, isn't it? Um, yeah, Free, Free Mind, Mind is you're... distributed by Zojax. All right, okay, but the the, the, the label itself that it's on is it? It's we Free own Mind. the music, yeah. Right, and yeah. that is that your label, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. So, how do you find the challenge now? Where you obviously previous albums that kind that side of it was done by someone else. Now it's more like you're taking on you're taking on taking on board more of the production when i say in the, in the total sense of your album how do you find that challenge transitioning from just being an artist to now being executive producer making all decisions how do you find that well um it's some of the same people that i used to work with musically right. and creatively um so i don't find that hard i kind of know um the talents of the people i work with i right. know what they can deliver i know the sound that i can get from them Mm-hmm. Um, even all the way up to mastering, I know where I can get what sound from okay. uh, and, uh, and what I want the album to actually sound like right. um, and to what level. And I know what people will help me achieve those goals. Um, and so I don't find that as hard as, poss- as, as I did like on the first album that I did on my own, like um, uh, Reggae Forever. Yes. I, you know, that was more challenging to me because then I was like, okay, so. I want this sound, I want that sound, I want that sound. But, okay, I haven't worked with this person in a long time. I wonder if, you know, 
now it's not so hard. It's just like, all right, I already know where I'm going to get this from, that from, that from, right. and here are the songs, and we just put it together, you know. Um, I, and also, um, like, I guess the, the, the most difficult part for me is like maybe paying the right people and, and ensuring that I get what I paid for right? Uh, without offending anybody, without saying, <laughs> hey, oh, um, do this over because, you know, it's not right. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Those so guess, that's, conversations. That's, that's a little <laughs> challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I could be, when I hold you up to a certain standard and you don't deliver, um, sometimes I could be a little straightforward and it may come off a little way. Mm -hmm. And so I try to find other ways to communicate that. If I feel strongly about it, I'll have somebody else say it. Right. But that would just be like, all right, just do this back as in the song, but get back to me in however long, you know, that you can, right. or three days or two days. And people would be like, yo, you know. <laughs> how, 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 how about the old, how about when they say the, the crap sandwich, where you find something good to start off with, then give them the piece where you don't like, then end with something good at the end. You book, yeah. you bookend it with, with two good things. We give them the piece where they're like, that's what I've been told is the best way to deliver uh, bad news. So you find something good. If they probably give you something, you don't like it. Um, <laughs> let, me find, let me find something good. Let me find something good. You give it to me quick. I like how quick you give it to me. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> what you see what you give me? Right. Any piece of it like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I have a I have a, a tendency to be too direct and too blunt. Really? You know, sometimes. Yeah. And 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 so um I, I, before, the thing that I do though is before I start working with somebody, I explain to them like, hey, um, I appreciate you and that's why you're here and I work with you because you are the best um, at what you do and I feel like you are capable of making, you know, this project or taking this, helping me to take this project to where I need it to go right. and so I don't expect anything less. And if I do get less, I won't accept it and it won't be appreciated. And that's it. And, um, and it's nothing personal. It's just, you know, um, it's all about the music. It's higher than me mm -hmm. and it's higher than you. Right. Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. It's the music. It's the music. Yeah. I'm on behalf of. It's just right. the music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, you know, I'm interested. I mean, obviously, this is you now your sixth album. And obviously, I mean, we don't have all night to talk about all five, but... One album I have to talk about in particular is Reggae Forever because I understand you got a Grammy award for that or Grammy nomination, I should nomination, say. Nomination, yeah, one. yeah. And um, that was the first one, like you said, was on Free Mind. So was it particularly satisfying to get that kind of recognition for an album, which was your first one that you're actually um, producing on your independent label? Was that particularly... And what also attending the, the, the Grammy nomination, the Grammy awards themselves, what was that like? Um, it, I, I, I'm sure I, I was very grateful to know that my peers, because the people who can vote for you is definitely people who are, uh, registered voters, uh, and who are on, you know, board, uh, with the Grammy and production and things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely not just like regular fans and, you know, right. people. Uh, and so I'm I'm happy that my project was considered by my peers as much as it was and was appreciated by them, um, and I'm I also uh, appreciated them considering me um, to be the female worth um, mentioning. You know, after 25 years hmm. or 22 years. Yes. Yes. Um, and and I think yeah. So I was 100% grateful. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I attended the Grammy Award ceremony, because I believe um, that if they were, uh, if they saw my project uh, as no, noteworthy as they did, then it, it, it's for me to show my gratitude by at least um, showing up in my <laughs> pink, in my pink. And um, even though my pink, 
a very feminine outfit was not appreciated by a lot of people. Oh, she couldn't wear something else. I felt like if I wore like a like a crocus bag, then would I still be like, yo, she couldn't wear something else. If I wore like a real diamond over my whole body, they would have been like, yo, she couldn't wear something, wear something else. else. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I feel like um, I, I, I had fun and, and mm. it was worth being there. Mm. Um, it, it was exciting. It was an exciting moment. And um, again, I'm very grateful to all my peers and people in music. No, and well deserved. I'm sure, to be honest with you, I expect this uh, album, Gemini, to be amongst the next set of award nominations that come out. I do expect that because I do think there is so much there that you've, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's the um, expected Itana stamp. You know, it's, you know, I know it's you. But right, I get you. that, you know, some of them sound like they're made for live performances. I get that feel for it. I think talk about it, the, the way that the production on that feels like this feels like you, ha- you had a live band in to do it. That's how it's production feels. That was like. the intention. That right. was the intention for sure. Right, 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 right. So that's what I'm saying. I feel like this one I can hear. I would be, su- I would, I'll be surprised if it's not amongst the next um, um, set of Grammy nominations. I fully expect it to be. Um, Thank you. So, and also love. This, uh, this, we have to talk about some of these songs, really, because when I, when I listen to that song, it feels like it conjures up ideas of you singing that, like, at an award ceremony, like, you know, dim lights and piano and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. down, you know, when I listen, love. That's the if I'm directing your video, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> that's the, that's what I would do for that video. So, um, and it's interesting that you're actually singing to the emotion itself, you know, which I found an interesting concept. What's the creative history behind that song? What motivated you to, to, to write that one? Um, it's my the song "Love" is my 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 letter to love. It's my conversation with love, the mm-hmm. spirit of love. And I'm saying um, that I don't want to forget what it feels like to feel the energy of love. Um, and I wrote that song because there's so many things going on all over the world, right. even on social media. You know, you see people get killed, people laying in, in, in blood, children getting molested and beaten and hurt in many ways and i'm like why is this normal why is this even on anywhere um for people to see and and some people it's not like um the people who are commenting are being helpful you know like they're not saying you know um you know find where this person lives or um call the police or is this reported to the police or let's investigate whether or not this is reported or stuff like that you know people are like oh like, you know, the comments are not um, helping the situation. And I'm thinking that are we, and I'm questioning whether or not we are too numb and mm-hmm. whether or not we are forgetting the, um, uh, what it means to appreciate and love life. Yes. Um, and I'm wondering whether or not we're forgetting how to love. Right. And so I wrote that song. And especially like with experiences in relationship and mm-hmm marriage and love i'm saying wow are we really still like loving each other like we should when we see other things on social media same way Mm -hmm. um social media and tv it's like they're basically taking away all the things that really matter right 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 no that's absolutely fun i mean it is very interesting and i found their layers so there are, there's so many layers to the lyrics because i people listen to it and think it's, you're only talking about relationships but obviously your no. concept was a lot wider there's a social conscious conscience behind the lyrics as well now i mean it apply, it kind of applies to relationship too you know because yeah. like mm-hmm. a relationship that you really want to hold on to but at the same time when you're holding on to it the only thing that you're holding on to is the memories mm-hmm. of the love you had you mm-hmm. know so all right. kind of them, oh, it's, it's really broad. It's really right. broad. Right. And I tried my best to sum it up in just one song. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to say, uh, that's why the art, that's why to talk about your artistry of songwriting, because you put so many layers. There's so many, you hear one layer, listen to it again, you hear a different layer, then you hear another layer in there as well. But one song, which um, I wouldn't say this one has so many layers, but back it up. You know I love the way we grind. 
Stack it up, your body. Your body pants up, up on mine. Right. No, 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 no. Then when you roll it on the seat like a gravel ball. Me left out the roll and sheet like a grab a leaf. Me left out the part of the But you see how you jump on it, though. All right. Okay, that's anything for you. So, like I was saying at the beginning of the interview, I think you explore a bit more of your sensuality. You understand? That kind of comes out yeah. more. And So, anything for you. Talk me through the creative history of that song, then. Anything for you is... is um, it, it's a song that kind of came together, uh, like... Someone sent me a track mm. and um, I know I wanted it to be like a hot, love, passionate song, you know, mm. and we start putting it together called Campbell, who is another songwriter. And when the song was finished and we got into the studio and record, what I like most um, besides my vocals and the lyrics is the way the background vocals was done to complement what right. was being said. Right. Yeah, and it just it just worked out perfectly. Absolutely. So, like I said, that's one of my. I mean, my favorites change every now and again, still. But um, no, next one. Doing a hundred on the highway. I ain't taking no cars. All my struggles in the rearview mirror. If you ain't going my way, you can get off and let me turn up and let the music play. That's the chorus or part of the chorus from on the highway, which kicks off the album Gemini, and that one there. I feel like that's like some quintessential reggae production on that. You understand? <laughs> high energy, high energy production. You understand? Get the blood pumping. And, you know, if you want something to wake you up in the morning, you understand? 100 that, on the highway. That's the one. You understand? Perfect. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. That's motivational music. You understand? Let's put on that, that. Not in the gym or things you feel kind of a bit down or depressed. Fling that one there on. Is that what? I know you're addressing like the trolls and all them kind of people. Or even... I mean, you're gone independent now. You're doing executive producing. You're controlling. You're taking more control of your um your career, your destiny, your musical direction. Was it? Uh, were those the layers that you're putting in there? Or uh, um in, in in the lyrics? It's everything. Right. It's everything. It's um, it's everybody who wanted me to be in a particular box. Right. It's for those who were hating because they think that I don't need to be where I need to be. Um. Or they they don't think that things should be the way they are, mm. or people who just come straight to your account like trolling you out of the blue on some fake account talking or all these things, or even people you know talking trash, you know. Um, and it's just saying, you know what, Matt will my head straight. Better <laughs> yet, I mm. put my blinkers on. Right. Better yet, mm. I'm jumping in my car. I'm going 100 on the highway. Right. If you ain't um, um, if you're not a power, me am just move along, but move up. <laughs> yeah, cut. Yeah, cut got you. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. 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 An obligation, a responsibility, whichever way you might look at, to not only entertain, but also to uplift people and maybe even be like this the voice of social conscience because um party and smoke so and um the song jamaica these ones seem to be speaking to obviously the um um social issues within jamaica itself generally i mean people can relate to it from around the world do you feel as well that's something that artists have a little bit of an obligation maybe the responsibility to not just entertain people but inspire uplift even um remind their conscience to them to remind them that hang on it's not just about partying and whatever. Also think about, you know, other things in life which are more serious and probably more conscious. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, start, I started out as part of my mission and part of my goal, um, part of my mantra, part of everything that I do in music is to uplift, to inspire, mm. and to strengthen the minds and spirit of people all over the world, from the young to the very young at heart. <laughs> well yeah. Mm. And so it's what I do. And so, yeah, you gotta get like, you know, the, um, oh, I'll do anything for you. And you know, the mm. kind of bubbly, bubble me up, bubble me up, bubble bam time. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, I want to say though we have fun, um, sometimes we do experience things and we'll go through things and, and I feel like it's alright to inspire 
uh, people through music. It's, it's, I think I love my people. Right. Um, I love my fans. Right. And I'm very much excited when, you know, to see and happy to see when people advance and when people around me or people I know or people I see. It's good. It, I, I think it's a great thing to see them do good and, and be good and, 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 um, uh, and receive goodness too. Mm. And so um, to inspire them, I, I feel good when I do it just the right. same. And when I think of some of my people who will go into the club and throw the, the, the liquor all over them, <laughs> knowing that their life is not 100% right. going in the yeah. right direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to remind them that, yo, somebody in that party, though you never invited them, somebody's in there and they're watching you. And they're, they're thinking that you're stupid because you're not seeing them. Mm. And they're about to get you. Mm. And that's why I'm going to say, well, jacket and tie, see them as long as the cups exactly. go up, they might tear them down. And so while you're drinking and getting drunk, mm. they're clearly wide open watching you and ready to just put you down. Absolutely. So, I'm saying that we need to be a little bit more aware. We need to be, you know, more strong. We need to be more, more goal oriented. We need to think about the economy. We need to think about our, you know, our financial goals as well. All of these things. And our problem. While we are past the and smoke. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and our so, problem. I mean, I want to I see my people do good. And, and mm. that's why I do those things. And I know most times that those songs are not normally the most popular one. Mm. Because um, in, a, in entertainment, especially in America, um, they don't encourage positive music, right. right? Because the intention of those with power is not to inspire and to uplift. True, true, true. <laughs> Their intention is to derail. You understand? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, so the positive songs, the mm. most positive songs are not always the most popular ones. So yeah. I already know mm. that, okay, these songs may not be the most popular ones. Mm. But it's all good because mm. who for ear we ear, mm -hmm. and who for see we see. You understand? Right. 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 <laughs> yeah. It might not be the most popular, but it might be the most necessary still. Right. <laughs> uh, right, right. Uh, and speaking of necessary, I mean, one which, and, I, and, I, and I, um, a subject which doesn't get talked about a lot. I mean, when I heard the lyrics on this one, you don't have to put another mark on your wrist. I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be like this. Let's talk about it. And even if you feel there is no hope, you're trapped inside those four walls. Let's talk about it. Now, again, that's a song which I said, production-wise, has that live band feel to it, right? Right. But beyond the production, the lyrics and the subject, you're talking about people, um, maybe depression, suicide, that type of thing, which is not something that people almost taboo for people to talk about in music and you have decided to confront that head on. So what was the inspiration behind doing a song like that? Again, when, with, with songs like those, um, them three songs that talk about it, Jamaica and, and um, Party and Smoke, I thought that I was actually going to have some people be upset <laughs> because I said, a serious time, so I like that line, Papa Tirate, that line, gold teeth still shine in a free food line. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I thought that people wouldn't understand, but they actually got it. Like people actually were talking to me on Facebook about it and I said, yo, that's Sunday. You know, so people actually got it. And when, when it comes to talk about it, um, it's the same. Like I expected the same reaction. Like why is she even talking about this right now? I don't want to be thinking about depression, you probably don't want to think about it because it's not affecting you. Mm. But there are many people, especially like now, in this time, you know, not being able to work, mm. lock up in the house, mm -hmm. no one's communicating with you because normally those people go to work, they go to school. Mm -hmm. So there is somebody saying something and they're communicating. Yes. But if they're just in the house, they don't have to call you. Mm -hmm. They don't have to talk to you. You don't have to see them. And then that person suffering from whatever they're suffering from is home alone, mm -hmm. locked up inside, suffering from whatever they're going through. Right. And, and I'm just encouraging those people to say, yo, pick up the phone, talk to somebody because, and I can do that because there was a time in my life years ago when I was there. And just imagine if I did um, what the, 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 my spirit at that time was telling me to do. Right. I would not be here and you would not have my seven albums. Oh, wow. You would not know my music. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And so I want to make sure that I 
pass on the message like, hey, just when you feel like this is the end, mm -hmm. all you have to do is just make that one next step and keep going. Um, and, and, and what I had to do, and I know that you didn't ask me all of this, but I'm going to say it anyway. What I had to do is I had to um, detach myself from all the expectations and all the things um, that people expected you to have and all the, 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 the words that people throw at you. Mm. And, um, and everything that I went through, like I had to just separate myself from me and it, and I had to just move along. And my only thought in my mind was to survive, to live. Right. And then once you keep going, I mean, the possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. You just have to forget about that moment. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just keep moving. Absolutely. End of story. <laughs> no, no, no. You say never. I, that's what I want. I want you to tell me about where the 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 the, the, the headspace you are in, the creative um, space you are in at the time. You know what put what because music is capturing a moment. What you do is you capture an idea, capture a moment, and you encapsulate it in that song. So when I talk about the music, what I'm trying to do is tap into. Where were you at that time? And in it, my mind, right? And I like no, no two minutes are the same, you know. So the, 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 the time that you spend making that in the, in the forever in the world, in the evolution of the world, those that time you spend will never be will never be the this same. Thing. The only closest yeah, yeah. you can get to it <laughs> is the song. Is the song. That's the closest. It can be recreated. It can I be it. replayed again. The closest you can exactly. Get. So that the emotion that was being felt, the creative space people are in, what people were doing, what people were thinking, uh, and so much of it is um, is 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 coincidental. Things that you didn't plan to happen that just happened. You understand? There was a bigger plan. We say we say coincidence, but really, with God, there's no coincidence. Him does. You have a plan, and him plan too, and him plan bigger than fully. So when you capture something in a song, that's me now almost being in the room now to say okay we're, we're, that's the close we can get to replaying that that event you understand so that's how i yeah. feel my favorite tune still tight spaces I'm a that one, <laughs> there, my one there. that's my current favorite right now tight spaces that one has the r&b flavor on there it has obviously got the dance they got the dance all reggae thing on there it just seems to draw on at various genres to be right, right. one and for me, it's a perfect marriage of production and lyrics. I mean, Kibaka Pyramid, you couldn't get anybody better on that. His delivery. Don't say perfect. You could not it get so nobody perfect. better on that. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying that because I play that tune. Okay, I play a bubble still, but I play that tune on my show. It has to be like, no, this one here for me. I agree. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely smash that one. And the way you play off each other as well. It perfect, the perfect um choice of um of a feature on the album, the whole thing on that song I should say. So this is for me now, right? <laughs> Tell <spaces>. me, <laughs> Where, how, how did that one come about? Um, okay, so I did a show in the UK, right? And I I uh, came off stage and Kabaka Pyramid was there, mm. and he must say, yo, you know, nice show, enough nice performance, and whatever, whatever. And he said, yo, send my number here. I'm in the UK for a little bit. And I said, for real, I'm going to be here for like five days or whatever. Whenever I really get the link uh, physically, but we did talk on the phone. Right. Um, but the vibe that I get from him, he was just like such a good spirit. You know, he has a big heart, um, but at the same time, militant, um, serious about the music and very creative. Mm. He really loves the music. Mm. And when I discovered that, I said in my mind that I'm, that I'm going to have to, find a way to collaborate with him somehow mm -hmm. and I think that on this album it was the perfect opportunity to do Absolutely. so and when I heard the song mm -hmm. when the song done Ricardo everything I said yo this is a song for him mm -hmm. and that was it wow 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 I have to say man that one day again you explore your sensuality and that's another one explore your sensuality on that you understand so mm -hmm. yeah man what am I I mean I got it but um for a long time now, like I never felt like I needed to express that in music, you know, like I feel like that part of me only um, belongs or the depths of it belongs only in my bedroom, right? right? And I said, 
Yeah, but I could touch on it because people do experience these feelings every single day of life. Mm. And, um, uh, and I need to share some of that with them so that they know I feel like them sometimes, you know, mm. and do like them too because we're people, you know? So mm. um, I think that's why. And more than anything, they said that the divorce rate was all also increasing during this period. Right. And I think that families need to stick together. And one of the things that keeps families together is expressing that kind of sensual emotion that you're talking about. Right, right. And I said, you know what? Let me throw up some of this in there because then my people need to stick together. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. That's my, my favorite. That one there, man. You understand? Thank you. <laughs> she text OMW. I'm glad to say you are weak. <laughs> <laughs> He's perfect, perfect. What are we talking about sensuality? Bubble. Right. That's the yeah. single, that's the power play single right now on flames. Um, so yeah, obviously the video as well is out now, like as we talked about it earlier. Um, you know, where you're er erasing any misconceptions as to what bubble actually means for those outside of Jamaica or outside of Jamaican culture who may think you're talking about food or think you're talking about oh, no. um, the hobby of blowing bubble. I'm talking about getting close to your partner as close as possible and turning the bottom half of you, your waistline, <laughs> and turning it in slow motion kind of thing, mm -hmm. grooving closely, tightly, you know. Um, something that could make any kind of real exhilarating emotion pop off at that moment. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about bubbling. <laughs> bubbling, right? Okay. Yeah. Now, now the video itself. Are you? Um, how involved are you in the um in the visuals that um get portrayed in the video? Are you? Are you again hands on there as well? I won't say control freak. I'll just say hands on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only part that I was hands on and is what I'm wearing and right. you know my hair and makeup and the kind of bring back the you know the 70s 80s kind of vibe um the look you know with the mesh and thing and thing mm -hmm. and um the whole rubber dog feeling in a um dance hall and at the same time they feel you know but um the rest of it sure I can't do all of that like you know um with the light, lighting and the vintage feel and how the people look in the dance. Like, that's all the video director job right there. Mm, okay. Well, yeah, Bubble, which is the current single out now. Like I said, do the Spotify thing, do the Amazon thing, you understand? Do, do the iTunes thing, you understand? Yeah, so yeah. Thing because, like I said, it's an independent label, independent distribution, executive produce, everything coming from Itana, you understand? So please, please. I want to tell you that my, my biggest, my biggest um, audience so far, well, uh, the streaming numbers are high on that song. Mm. Um, it's also high on 100 on the Highway. Yes. And um, uh, Truly. I mean, the album has overall been getting a, a good feedback across the board. Um, but I think for sure that Bubble has gotten a lot, a lot, a lot of love um, all, all around from everybody. And I think I'm confused enough. People are saying, weird. I eat all of that. Oh, yeah. Somebody, I think I saw a, a, a comment on YouTube saying, oh, um, um, Empress got bad, but I love it still. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but you seem to be a very creative. I mean, you should be a very creative force. I mean, just a few months ago, you, re you released an EP, uh, was at Dimensions, a few yeah. months ago. Um, I mean, you call it an album or a it's a body of work regardless. So Yes, right. Because it has eight tracks on it, right? Um, and before, I guess some time ago, an album needed to be at least like an hour long. No, it only needs to be 15 minutes long for it to be considered for... Um, um uh grammy nomination or anything okay. like that okay so um eight songs is way past of five course. songs or three songs so hey i mean it, it it's considered an album just the same right okay so but i only released that so that my fans could stay in tune to something and locked into something while i work on the album itself yeah okay 
Well, it's a lot of work, but I do it because I love you guys. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I was saying you seem to be a creative force. So let's do some. That's that's what we did. That's what previously. Let's do some horizon scanning. Um, the album is out now. Um, and obviously the single is out. Bubble is out now. Um, Gemini, the album is out now. What's coming down the track um, in the short, medium, long term for Itana? Oh, you know, I'm working. You know, I'm working. Just look out for it because it's coming. Um, and I don't want to talk too much about it, but there definitely is a project in the um, pipeline for 2021. Right. Uh, and you're going to love it just the same, I hope. Uh, and, and I'm putting it out there for my fans again to... Um, and you know what? I think the hardest thing for me is going to be performing uh, the show, performing the songs on a live event. Why? Because you'll get anywhere from like a half hour to 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Mm. Unless we go to Africa where we can perform for two and a half hours and then <laughs> nothing, you know? Uh, but then, yeah, I'm going to have a hard time like picking the songs to perform. Mm. Mm. Because there's so much it's, it's so a lot. That, has, that hasn't been performed live. By the time you get to perform live, there'll be so much. Right. Good. Yeah, that's so like much. Two albums, who knows? Two albums and a No, EP. three. Three, yes. Three no, albums. Three. Three, three. <laughs> well, two full albums and an EP, yeah. And an EP. Right. <laughs> Whoa, I, I don't know how you're going to work And speaking of which, two questions I want to ask then. Um, you performed the world over with um, a myriad of artists. What's your most memorable performance on stage? What would you say is the most memorable performance? Shoot. Oh. I would have to say um, Birmingham and London when we did um, the Morgan Heritage Store. Right. And I would have to say Brazil when I did the New Year's party in the street uh, uh, in 2018 or 17, mm-hmm. January. And um, and I'd have to say Kenya. Wow. So that's three mm-hmm. favorites then. <laughs> Top three. Yeah. Yes. It was three. It's, it's three of the biggest moments. Why? Because of the, there were moments on each of those stages. Mm. And, and there are more. There, I mean, for sure, there is more. But it, the, the response for some of the songs on any one of those stages, there mm. were times when I could not hear the mic. Right. I couldn't hear the I couldn't hear in my in ear, my I mean in ear money time. I can't mm, hear. Really? I couldn't hear the stage. Nothing. Mm, like I had to just stand there mm. and let them sing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna test you again now. Right, right. Now, dream collaboration and two things. Then dream collaboration. Who you want to collaborate with, and who have you collaborated with so far? Which is your favorite? We say yeah. I, Okay, Kibaka Pyramid probably. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's just me. That's just my favorite collaboration. But who's your favorite you. collaboration and who would be your dream collaboration? All right, so I don't have a favorite collaboration because like, I purposely pick the people I choose to work with. Mm. Um, and so far, it's been amazing uh, every single time. Right. You know, and, and I appreciate the effort. And I also, I enjoy working with um, Being a Man as well. Right. Um and and um and uh pressure. Right. You know. I've never really had an issue with any artist that I choose to work with. Them always just respond and the music comes back in a timely manner. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate the res- the respect that they give the music and to me, you know. Um as far as dream collaboration, Lord, oh my lord, I don't know. Um uh, top three then. I would have to say, like a Stevie Wonder, um, a Beyonce, mm-hmm. um, and I would say Cartel, but I already have that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, uh, people would be surprised to say the, to who you actually like. But, well, yeah, okay. Well, well thank you so very much, Itana. I really appreciate this. Um, the album, like I said, is doing phenomenal things on um, streaming and everything. But that's no excuse, people. Go out and still support the thing. You understand? She <laughs> needs all the support she can get. Um, I don't know if in the interim you're going to have to do some Zoom concerts, maybe some um, acoustic Zoom concerts or something. I don't know. I did that already. I did, I did a, um, a live Facebook performance. Right. And I was going to delete the, the link initially. 
And um, I saw what it did for so many people. So I decided to leave it up. Right. Um, so they still can go to Facebook, one is on O-N-E, E-C-A-N-A. Mm-hmm. And they can still watch the live performance. Right. And before we go no It was further, very up close and personal live yeah? with the band and thing. Yeah, which tunes which tune them can look out for Panda now? Oh, all the songs that I did all the way up to Reggae Fiber. Right, up to Reggae Fiber. Right, okay. So we're saying that maybe they need to be something now for the new album. Maybe I don't know. We need to do something for the new right. album. I sure do. Right, right. I I do. But you know, the only, thing that's, the only thing that's getting in the way of that is, you know, getting my team to be in one place and if okay. i go to jamaica um which i'm not in jamaica no but i and i want to go back but i don't want to be tested i don't want that thing stuck in my nose <laughs> um yeah because then then i've seen it done yeah, online it and they push it all the way to the back of your throat mm. and i can't have that so i don't know how it doesn't work out <laughs> well i'm gonna tell you man so so yes well thank you so very much really appreciate that um and obviously, we'll be looking out for more um, content from you. More, I know there's going to be more music coming very, very soon. All the time. Wow. Be, be ready. Like, be ready. Right. <laughs> and for people who probably want to hit you up um, on the, the social media, you want to give out your social medias and all them things? Uh, it's on a strong one. E-T-A-N-A-S-T-R-O-N-G-O-N-E. Both for Twitter and Instagram. It's on a strong one. E T A N A S C R O N G O N E. And if you can't remember all of that, let's go to Etana Music.com. E T A N A M U S I C dot com. Etana Music dot com. Go to the bottom of the website or the lower part of the website. Mm. You know what? Go to the bottom of the website. Can't take you out. Can't take you out. Out of August. You can't take you out of August. Out of time. <laughs> so I've got to the lower part of the, the website. Part of the website. Yeah. yeah. And you will see, you know, the links for Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Mm. Just click for one of them, whichever one you choose. What she just said a while ago? The bottom part. <laughs> anyway. No, uh, so we now go to the bottom part. We are going to the lower part. Right, the lower part. <laughs> and the website. Right, right the website. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I know Jamaica can people cliff up them thing there. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> an election year in part, it is an election year. In the United yeah. States, and we know you get in trouble the last time there was an election. Yeah, I'm sure I did. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so this year, I assume you're going to you seem like a very outspoken person that can't help themselves. If you feel something, um, <laughs> you're, you're convinced of something, even if you say no, I'm not gonna say nothing. If you feel in yourself that you should say something, <laughs> you, you seem like the type of person that will say something anyway. So, yeah, then, so, so, so this year. Are you going to be keeping a low a, a, a low profile when it comes to um, commenting about the, the, the elections in the United in the United States, the, particularly Donald Trump? I wouldn't say a low profile, um, but and, and and I think that people are going to hate what they want to hate and say what they want to say and do what they want to do. Um, in any case, I think we all just need to hope for the best. Right. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. In any case, right. we need to just hope for the best. <laughs> right. I leave it as a, uh, I, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's so much going on in this world. Like, I think that there's gonna be a lot of changes that we need to look that we're gonna have to look forward to. Um, there's a lot of things in unfolding mm-hmm. and right in front of our eyes that we would have never thought was or existed. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of it is happening all at once, and um. The some of the, I mean, most of the news sites that are very quiet about it, they're not saying anything at all. Mm-hmm. They're just talking about COVID over and over and true, over again. True. Um, but there's so much unfolding. This year is going to be a year to remember, and there will be changes to come that we're going to have to live with moving forward. So, life as we know it, knew it mm-hmm. in 2019 to 2020, January, is just it's never going to be that again. Hmm, absolutely. We will tell our our grandkids mm-hmm. uh, and, and our great grandkids mm-hmm. what it was like in 2018 and 19 and before yeah. that. But definitely, we're not going to have it the same way moving forward. Again, a lot will change. Yeah. And a lot may remain the same. But we just have to hope for the best. And yeah, it's not even about, it's not about Trump. It's not about them anymore. It's about 
what are we going to do and how will we survive the changes to come and are we prepared and all of that stuff. While I think a lot of people is focused on, you know, election and who are going to do this and do that and who have sense and who don't have sense and who don't like who, those things are irrelevant to what really needs to be, you know, um, uh, focused on. And so we will see in time all we need to see. Well, I always say we would talk about black people. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. No, no, I mean, a lot, a lot will affect us, you know. And you know why a lot of that is important too? Because think based on where we're coming from, right? A lot of us uh, were not born wealthy. Mm-hmm. And, and we know why that is already. You know, it's been so long that we, uh, some of us still in slavery after today. Mm-hmm in different parts of the world um, as black people. And I think that um, instead of looking for uh, this white race, or, and I have to say white because, I mean, we're talking about black and white. It has nothing mm-hmm. to do with prejudice, right? We're, we're talking about black and white. And other races too. I mean, in, in, I think it's not about asking them to, or, or, uh, to like us or wanting them to like us. It's not about them liking us. Nobody has to like you. True. But what what but what you what we have to do as a people is to be able to come up economically, come up on education, um, come up to match all the other people who provide the things to us that we consume. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to match them. Uh, and the way we do that is by educating our children, educating ourselves, um, um, strengthening ourselves economically, um, trading amongst each other and stuff. Those are the things we need to pay attention to. And even if we say, all right, then what about statues? Yes, yeah, statues is important. But at the end of the day, though, it's the system that affects us the most. Mm-hmm. And so if you get caught up in, oh, all of this, you know, all the different groups and what they're talking about. To me, it's just a distraction from what, what is really important. Yes. So I don't want to join conversations about, oh, they should take down that statue because he raped this person. You know what? At the end of the day, whether it's up or it down, at the end of the day, we're still affected by the system. And we're still not uniting and still not doing the things that we need to do to strengthen ourselves as a people. Yes. And as long as we're divided, as long as we're fighting about the different topics that are used to distract us we will forever be in the same situation and it will not get any better Mm -hmm. so even if i'm taking on 150 statues today you know what tomorrow the situation is still the same absolutely the real Mm -hmm. thing that affects us is still the same and that is the problem Mm -hmm. like i don't want to have conversations about different sides and i don't want to have conversations about whether or not they should take down the statues and i don't want to have conversations about the very political blm people you know who are supported by people who are destroying us anyways yeah. like i want to talk about what are we doing as a people to strengthen us absolutely no 100 percent. and so we we'll get everything we'll chat we we'll chat about the bubbling we chat about the, 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 um, the, 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 um, the, the, the control freakness. We chat about the music. We chat about the sensuality. And now she given, you know, she has a clear blueprint of what black people need to do to get out of this situation. Firstly, not just symbol, there has to be substance. Yes, taking down the, um, the statue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Symbol. But really, we need to have substance behind that. You understand? Yes, don't get me wrong. I agree with taking down the, the statues. But what I disagree with is if we think that's, that's it, that is, we've done our, we've, we've achieved. <laughs> Why we've does done the fight stuff. finish there? Right, you know, right. like, that's symbol. That's even symbol. when, that's when um, I, I remember watching this guy on the TV the other day, last week, and he cried, like, in the middle of the interview, I remember crying with him. He cried because he said, after my son died, um, whether he was protesting or not. Nobody from any of those groups who say that they are for um, the black race called me. Jesus. The mayor didn't call me. The governor never called me. The police didn't call me. I couldn't even see my son until a week later. Wow. 
And he said, at the end of the day, if even a phone call from any one of those groups would have been enough for me. Hmm. See there? You know, he said, I didn't even want no money. Mm. I don't want nothing, just a phone call. And that's why it hurts me because at the end of the day, yeah, we're talking about, you know, and excited about and, um, oh, this my and this my and following all these people. But at the end of the day, find out what, look, just based on in, in the past, I don't know, three weeks, four weeks, look at what the real cause of these people has been. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And look at where they are now when children are getting shot. Hmm. When people are dying in, in, in the same black communities, mm-hmm. when supermarkets, food sources are being destroyed in those same communities that already needed help to begin with, mm-hmm. and they're absent mm-hmm. in these shootings. Right. <laughs> and these shootings have, they, they've been there from, I don't know, however long, four, eight years, mm-hmm. 12 years, been there. So it's, an, it's, it's not something new. Hmm. So I feel like all of those attention and passion and money donations that were given to them should have been redirected to uh, redevelop those communities. Yes. But instead, they're there fighting about um, police and about things that, yo, at the end of the day, when the system fix, when we fix we, <laughs> the rest will fall in line. Absolutely. The half will fall in line. There is no if and the about, about it. So we need to get our get the narrative straight. Absolutely, 100%. And you could have do a whole interview just on that alone. So. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, it's all I think it is, you, it, not, not, you know, if you vote, you look like, say, you for the, you for just run, be a politician and done. Hell like, no. You have a blue, oh, no. You have no. the blueprint. No, you have the blueprint. I would say. never do that. You know you why? You have the blueprint. You, have the you blueprint. know why? Let me tell you why I wouldn't do it straight. I'm going to tell you in a one sentence. Yes. Not even a sentence. I just called three names. Mm-hmm. And you know the story behind them, so you'll put it together. Yeah. Marcus Garvey. Yeah. Malcolm X. Yeah. Recently, Nipsey Hussle. Right. <laughs> I okay. My case. Okay. All right. All of them. <laughs> All of them now I rest my case. in very in very um suspicious circumstances, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Right. Bite the hands off. So, all right. Well, all right. Well, you know what is true. Thank you so very much, Katana. <laughs> I am very much. I've been I've been inspired. I've been entertained. I've been educated, and I've been guided this evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank you so very much. I feel like I feel like you've added considerable value to my life this evening. So thank you very. I much. hope I did. I hope I did. Thank so, you. So yes, um, we have the next single coming out. If you have another quick chat, jump on Flames Radio. You're more than welcome. Um, it's really, and I'm, I'm joking, but really, it's been a pleasure. It's really been a pleasure because yeah, man, um, thanks for having me. Because I think your artistry, you know, what I mean, I think it is very, um. So it's very brave of you to explore your artistry as much as you have on this album. I really do think Thank you. Some, some, some artists play very safe and you didn't play very safe. You, you know, you push the boat out a little, fur, a little bit further than usual, I think, in certain areas. I'm an artist. I'm an artist. That's what I'm supposed to do. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And well done for that. And like I said, when next you want to come past back through Flames Radio, feel free. The floor is yours and you're more than welcome. Thank you so very much. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Bye. Okay, then. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.